Fear Effect 2 Retro Helix for the PlayStation 1. Now, before we get into this review, I'm just going to say this game is crazy. Now, one thing I want to say about this game aesthetically, you guys can kind of tell it kind of looks kind of cartoony, but that's because this game uses cell shaded graphics, which the original one did as well. And I believe it pushes the PlayStation 1 to its hardware limits just because of the detail and just the graphics of this game. They look fantastic, even to this day, they hold up very well, and they're just very interesting in itself. Now, in Fear Effect 2, it's a prequel to the first game, but you play as Hannah and Rain, two girls, and a whole bunch of other different mercenaries at different points of the game that are out to kind of find this weird, dark, secret core, but this game is very much an acid trip, I believe, because at different points of the game, you end up... So essentially in the beginning of the game, you end up in what almost feels like a Metal Gear Solid mission. This game is very stealth based, very action oriented, but at the same time, there's a right and a wrong time for everything. So kind of what's happening is you, in the beginning of the game, invade this party to kind of, you know, I, I really, it's hard for me to remember what happened in this game just because it was so out there at different points. So you invade this party. And then you go into a VIP lounge and you pretty much get all this other information as to where to find this core, I believe. Now, throughout the game, you get different weapons. Some weapons are more powerful than others. Some of them are just very eccentric because uh, you go from having dual pistols, dual Uzis, single pistols and Uzis, rocket launchers, assault rifles, grenade launchers, flamethrowers, and the list just goes on. So... At different points of this game, you're faced with different puzzles and challenges. And that's kind of what makes this game up, is it's a big puzzle uh, system, which I believe the original game was more action and stealth oriented. And what's interesting about this game is just how the first half of the game, you're just playing as Hannah and Rain, and then you get introduced to two other characters. Uh, one is called Deke, the other is called... The name's baffling me right now. I forgot what his name was. And it's essentially all these people just kind of fighting over this core and this virus at the end of the game. But we're not going to get into too many spoilers. So, the game also has a really weird concept of disc swapping. And that doesn't take away from the game. I just want to mention that here just because I found it weird. Now, traditionally, in a four-disc game, it's you beat disc one, go to disc two... And can currently go to 3 and 4. Now this game is weird in that sense where you'll play like one mission on disc 1. It'll tell you to put disc 3 in. Then disc 2. Then back to disc 1. Then disc 4. Then disc 3. It doesn't kind of seem like these missions were developed concurrently or put on the same disc. Either for a reason or just because Eidos wanted to mess with you. But it makes the game very interesting. Now this game is tough. Uh, don't go into this thinking it's an easy game because I died so many times and there's a decent amount of save points But for me, it always felt like they were never where you needed them to be now The controls in this game are also very weird. So you have two options You have traditional what they call classic controls, which are tank based mechanics or because this game came out in 2001 They do have analog support. However, I noticed analog support doesn't always work in your favor, especially in some missions when you have to run away from things. Uh, essentially, there were points in one mission where I'm not going to go much into the mission. You run away from a stone man. And I was playing with analog controls most of the game because I found that easier. And one of the turns, for some reason, it doesn't let you turn uh, how you would think of turning analog-wise. And it kind of keeps pushing you in the opposite direction. So you're basically going to die. Uh, for this mission in itself, I had to turn on tank controls, practice, because I suck with tank controls, and then go in there, and after I got good, I was able to beat it, uh, but it, it, that mission almost made me quit the whole game, as well as another mission towards the end of the game that I just couldn't get past, because you have to kill all these enemies and keep dodging, and the dodge is like a weird roll in this game, and it, it doesn't really work sometimes maybe just the way i was playing it it doesn't really work but once i got past it the rest of the game was kind of easy now there's some weird humor in this game 
There's some dark humor in this game. And there's just some humor that I don't think a lot of people would like. Me, I found uh, certain things, certain characters were just very funny in themselves. Um, certain things were very comedic and certain things were just very... Not to be make it, uh, taken too seriously, but at the same time, they were there to kind of mess with you, I think. Um, this game has a lot of really weird twists and turns, but it adds to the charm of the game in that sense. Now, with Fear Effect 2, um, I, I just think it's a very interesting scenario of a game because a lot of the time within the game, I can honestly say I didn't know what was going on. Uh, and it's a one of those old school stealth based adventure games where... You kind of have to guess where you need to go next in order to solve the puzzles that are going on. So I'm not going to lie, there are points in this game that I had to look at a guide because I would find items, have no idea where I needed to use them to advance in the story, and the only way I was going to find that out was from the guides. Um, now with that being said, for anyone who's used to those old school action adventure stealth based games, this game might be for you. It kind of reminds me in a weird way of Tomb Raider, which makes sense because Eidos makes that, and Metal Gear Solid, but it has its own charm to it based on the art style, based on the characters, based on how it's a tough game that is comedic and funny at points too. Like the characters themselves are just very um, eccentric and you can get multiple endings within this game. Now, I... Don't recommend this series for people who want a casual game. You do have different difficulties here, but you have normal and you have hard. And hard, I mean, normal was hard. Like, there was no easy here. And, you know, you, you have to play it smart through a lot of this game. This game requires you to use your brain. But for a game that came out in 2001 at the end of the PlayStation 1's lifespan, graphically, as I was mentioning, this game still holds up very well. This game still looks great, and you can get it for about 20 bucks. Um, so, if you guys played the original Fear Effect, and you want more of that type of style of game, check out Fear Effect 2 Retro Helix. It's, uh, it's definitely an interesting game. It's worth the play if you want a challenge. That's kind of where I'm going to leave it at. Um, it's a good game, it's a tough game, but it's a classic. So... That's my thoughts on Fear Effect 2, guys. As always, leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. As always, thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Until next time, I'll catch you later, guys. Game on.